everyone, I am Christine Carol Therese Flores of Grade 11 Radiance and I welcome you to my integrated performance task for the first quarter. I am going to discuss my viewpoints of the different competencies acquired by the different subjects by applying how our household has contributed to the development of culture and society. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. As far as I can remember, our household was not yet able to experience disasters as its safety was planned beforehand of the construction and our house is located at a well-maintained subdivision and is also just built five years ago. On the other hand, other households have yet experienced a lot of unfortunate events, especially through the disasters that occurred just recently this year such as Typhoon Ulysses. The certain natural disaster has made the people living in the country's most largest and populous island, Luzon, dreadful. It has affected all aspects. Physically, it has destroyed many infrastructures such as homes and commercial buildings and has left a number of people dead. And over a thousand barangays were flooded which results most of the families homeless. In the psychological aspect, it was reported that children and their families experienced trauma caused by the onslaught flooding amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. On the other hand, thousands of residents' homes were washed out which made them evacuate and displaced to other locations. Politically, the people started a trend about hashtag Nasaan ang Pangulo due to the lack of public appearance and participation of the country's president during the tragic event. In the economic aspect, the agriculture and infrastructure figures to have a damage worth of 12.9 billion pesos, having the Cagayan region sustained to have most infrastructure damage and most parts of central Luzon having most of the agricultural damage. However, on the biological aspect, the Department of Health has reported 1,902 new cases of the current COVID-19 on the day of the disaster. Now, see how a disaster can affect us so much even in just a little time? Well, this implies that in order for us to be less vulnerable to the risks of a disaster, we should prepare for it and prevent ourselves from being exposed to certain hazards. Philosophy is the study of understanding fundamental truths about an individual, the world in which they live in, and their relationships to the world and to each other. I believe that we, humans, cause great impact to the state of our environment through our own actions, both positive and negative. I could say that our household has contributed to the development of culture and society in showing care for the environment by spreading awareness to others about its importance to humans, practicing environmental care such as using recycled materials or renewable resources, which emphasizes sustainable development that would benefit to our environment stability. By doing these, we are able to help save the environment and conserve our natural resources. We would also be capable in influencing the mindset of others that will drive them to become righteous human beings that improve the quality of life on Earth. With increase in the global population and the rising demand for food and other essentials, there has been a rise in the amount of waste being generated daily by each household. However, either due to less resources or inefficient practices, not all of the waste gets collected and transported to the final dump sites. If at this stage the management and disposal is improperly done, it can cause serious impacts on health and problems to the surrounding environment. Liquid waste may contain organic substances and nutrients that may be hazardous due to the chemicals or pathogens it may contain. Solid waste cause contamination of water sources, land pollution, and biodiversity loss. It also makes up most of the wastes thrown into landfills. Organic waste is turned into manure by microorganisms over time. However, this does not mean that you can dispose of them anywhere. Organic waste in landfills causes the release of greenhouse gases like methane, so it must never be simply discarded with general waste. Lastly, hazardous waste, of which should not be disposed of in regular garbage. Buried hazardous wastes can filter down through the soil and contaminate groundwater. Burning hazardous wastes simply distributes them over a larger area and releases them into the air. Pouring hazardous liquids on the ground can poison soil, plants, and water. 
When it comes to health, waste that is not properly managed are serious potential health hazards and lead to the spread of infectious diseases. Unattended waste could attract flies, rats, and other creatures that in turn spread disease. This leads to unhygienic conditions and thereby to arise in the health problems. Asides that, waste dumped near a water source also causes contamination of the water body or the groundwater source. This is how we practice waste management at home. We segregate them by biodegradable waste, non-biodegradable waste, and recyclable waste as mandated by our subdivision. We also utilize used plastic containers as plant pots and as a compost bin in our home. Our household contributes to the culture and society's development because we diligently practice proper waste segregation and the three R's, namely reduce, reuse, and recycle. We also get to influence others by our practices that can also make them sustainable in achieving proper waste management. Let us not forget that we are all deeply interconnected with nature and that we, too, can be heroes for the planet in our own ways. In life, there are certain variables wherein they are to be paired or coordinated to only one thing. In mathematics, they are considered to be one-to-one -one functions. An example of this would be our identification cards and passports, because they are only valid to be used by a unique person. We can apply this to the development of culture and society, for chaos would only rarely happen if we abide by this function, because it does not involve group activity, but only to one corresponding individual. Ang wika ay isang mahalagang bahagi ng paghihipagtalastasan. Bilang isang bansang archipelago, marami tayong mga isla at rehiyon sa Pilipinas. Dahil sa ating pagkakahiwalay-hiwalay, magkakaiba ang ating paraan ng pagsasalita, mga dialekto at maging ang ating kultura. Bunga nito ay nag-iiba ang pagintindi ng iba't ibang komunidad sa mga ibang salita o kulturang kinalakihan. Ayon sa isang panayam, Ang wika ng karamihan rehiyon sa Mindanao ay Bisaya na nagaling sa wika ng mga taga-Bisayas. Ngunit, may ibang mga salita na magkaibang kahulugan kapag ihambing ito sa iba't ibang rehiyon. Katulad na lamang sa salitang lugar, na ang ibig sabihin nito sa mga taga-Kagayan de Oro ay Gayon sa Tagalog. Ngunit ang ibig sabihin nito sa mga taga-Sibu ay Pook. Kilala ang Cagayan de Oro City ng hilagang bahagi ng Mindanao bilang City of Golden Friendship. Kaya mistula ay kultura ng mga tao ang pagkakaroon ng tawagang ikala o bay kahit magkakaibigan man kayo o hindi. Ito ang kultura ng mga taga-Cagayan de Oro na nagsisimbolo ng kanilang pagkikisama. Ngunit, maaari ring magkaroon ng hindi pagkakaunawaan sa paraan ng pagkikipag-ugnayan nito sa iba. Kung kaya ay mas mabuti na pag-aaralan natin ang iba't ibang kultura at pagintindi ng iba't ibang linguistiko sa iba't ibang komunidad upang tayo ay magkaroon na mapayapa na komunikasyon. Communicators constantly exchange information, meaning people always seem to be either receiving or giving information. It is very important to know the strategies of communication in order for effective communication to happen. Verbal strategy utilizes words being spoken either face-to-face -face or remotely. I've got a few ideas here. Let me go through them one at a time. We can treat each one on its own merit. In times of disasters, one must not panic. Vulnerability is a state of being open to injury and the quality of being easily hurt. Visual strategy uses signs, maps, or drawings as well as graphic design. This strategy reinforces verbal communication and they help to make a point. Nonverbal strategy, often communicated through facial expressions, hand gestures, posture, and even appearance, all of which can convey something. If you're feeling excited and happy, we might have thoughts like the future is bright, and we might do behaviors like call a friend or go see a movie. Most often, we get to overthink things beyond the truth. When communicating with others, we also incorporate the different communicative strategies. It is up to us on how we apply them for the development of culture and society. Our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are all connected and influence one another even if they are defined differently. Our thoughts create our feelings, and our feelings drive our behavior. For example, if we are feeling sad or depressed, we might have thoughts like we aren't worth much of anything, and we might do behaviors like staying in bed all day. Most often, we get to overthink things beyond the truth. Staying in this situation affects our mental health and the days that come. 
If we are feeling excited and happy, we might have thoughts like the future is bright, and we might do behaviors like call a friend or go see a movie. Research shows that happiness can in fact be the key to success. Indeed, happiness also brings substantial benefits for society as a whole. Without regular activity, your body slowly loses its strength, stamina, and ability to function properly. It's like the old saying, you don't stop moving from growing old, you grow old from stopping of moving. Exercise increases muscle strength, which in turn increases your ability to do other physical activities. Being more active can help you lower your blood pressure, boost your levels of good cholesterol, improve blood flow, keep your weight under control, and prevent bone loss that can lead to osteoporosis. Just move more with more intensity and sit less. You don't have to make big life changes to see the benefits. Just start building more activity into your day, one step at a time. Symbols are the basis of culture. A symbol may be an object, word, or action without natural relationship that is defined by culture. Everything we do in our life is based and organized through cultural symbolism and practices. Ma'am, may you please explain this phrase, different practices in culture are embedded with different symbols. Cultural symbols are practices that one has to abide to his cultural principles like the act of Manipo, which is the respect of the elderly. Social symbols are external figures of one's position in the society and usually as an indicator of one's social and economic status, like the wearing of jewelry, having a good and nice latest cell phone, having a nice car. Um, political symbols are representation with political meanings, like the sign of the President of the Philippines, or having a ring as the president of the company or riding a car with a flag which gives you a political meaning. And the last is the economic symbols are manifestations of the economic status of the country like the, the country is holding a Miss Universe or an Olympic which gives us uh, a clue that this country is already a developed country. Therefore, symbols and practices are significant for they implement diverse intentions in our society. Although it's diversity, it is also possible for misunderstandings to take place. The discipline given by the symbols and practices of culture in the society has given the ability for humans to interact efficiently, discourses of different norms, and influential ideas that are being passed through generations. And that is how the different competencies acquired by the different subjects contribute to the development of culture and society. Sadly, we have already reached the end of this video. Thank you all so much for watching. See you next time. Bye!